Are your drums sounding a little thin? Maybe they lack punch. And you want to learn how to use saturation, distortion, and group processing to get them to where they need to be. You know, I'm something of a scientist myself. Well, in today's tutorial, I'm gonna bring your drum mixing to a whole new level. Hey, what's up everybody? It's Fabio from Noise Hosting at Boombox, the home of collaboration. Before we crack on, don't forget that every month, Boombox gives away $500 worth of studio equipment. What? Now, all you have to do is comment down below with what your favorite compressor is. Now, this can be hardware or software. I wanna know what you're using, mainly on drums. And the comment section is all about getting conversation going and building a little community, plus, a chance to win all that studio gear. In this tutorial, I'm gonna be taking you through some simple to advanced techniques, so make sure you watch until the end. Thickening up samples is something that we all want to do, but we often feel that we need to apply loads of effects to make it happen, when in reality, there's a much simpler way to get around this. Take this snare, for example. Sounds good, but could sound thicker. So I've cut out one of the snare samples and I'm actually gonna load it into a sampler and we're gonna bring this down minus three semitones. Now you could do this with a sound shifter, but the beauty of a sampler is that it does retain the quality. It just stretches the sample out, making it a little bit longer. So I'm gonna quickly draw in some MIDI to match the snare rhythm. And then take the volume all the way down and blend it in. And I'm gonna finish this snare off by shaving off some of that tail and making it tighter. So, sometimes it's not down to effects, but what you can do with the sample that's already there. Flipping the phase is something that doesn't get spoken about a lot, and it can be one of the most effective ways of making sure that when you layer kicks, they're actually getting bigger and thicker rather than losing their punch and body. So I've got this kick here, and I wanna layer it to make it thicker with this kick here. Now I can very quickly check that there's no phase cancellation going on simply by adding a gain utility plugin, making sure the left and the right are inverted and then turning it on and off. After toggling it on and off, we can quickly hear that when the phase is inverted, it loses its punch, whereas the original sample is adding to what's already there. Let's hear that one more time. Now, if you wanna get punchy drums actually sounding louder rather than just being louder on a meter, one thing worth learning about is soft clipping. And soft clipping can be achieved very simply with something like an overdrive plugin. If you're using Ableton, use the saturator. By driving the snare or the sound into the digital resistors that are there, we clip the tops of those transients, but we add a little bit of tone at the same time. So we can make it sound louder but be metered quieter. So let's go ahead and drive the signal. Until we get a change of tone and color, you'll feel it becoming a bit soft. And then let's turn it on and off and match the perceived volume. Now, check the meter. So with it off, it's hitting zero. Now it sounds the same volume, maybe a little bit louder, but it's peaking a lot quieter. Check it out. We're actually only at 4.5. Let's hear it on and off. So hypothetically, that means that I could make my snare 4.5 decibels louder and not take up any additional headroom. You can also apply this technique to kicks, hats, and anything that you think sounds a little too punchy, but you don't want to lose the loudness. 
In this drum group, we have these sets of hats which are sitting a little too up front. Now we want to give a little bit more of a 3D space and push them back. So what we're gonna do is just take a quick listen. And these are the hats that we're focusing on. What you wanna do is take a reverb and apply it to the channel directly. So not as a send as you usually would with reverbs. We're gonna make this nice and short, like really, really short. We're gonna go from 0.4 of a second and we're gonna bring the pre-delay all the way down. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring up the wet until we start to feel a little bit of that room and that width and that sustain. The idea is not to make the reverb sound obvious, but to move it out of the way of the rest of the drums. If soft clipping or saturating or distorting isn't giving you the flavor that you want, you have another option. And that is to load a compressor that has an FET option. Now that is anything that's based on an 1176. If you're unfamiliar with that compressor, well, it's a great compressor that has a high level of distortion depending on how you feed the signal into it. So you can get a similar effect to soft clipping, but through a compressor, and that gives a slightly different tone that can sit nicely alongside other saturated sounds. The key here is to make sure that the attack is at zero or very, 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 very fast. We're gonna overdo the compression, figure out the ratio and release settings, and then pull back. So I've opted for the fastest attack, a pretty fast release to deal with the incoming transients so that the game reduction isn't holding on for too long gone for a higher ratio. Higher ratios are better at dealing with peaks. And then there's about eight dB of gain reduction occurring. We're controlling those transients, but we're adding a little bit of that saturated tone due to the nature of the compressor. When you're compressing your drums as a group, one thing to be aware of are your attack and release settings. A slow attack is gonna let the transients pass and making everything punchier. An attack that's too fast is gonna make everything sound squashed. Ultimately, at this point, you're not looking to do too much compression. I'm using this Lindell SBC, which is based on an API 2500, because it does a particularly good job at compressing drums and has a nice color and tone to it. Let's overcompress the signal and then play with the attack. I tend to like a fairly slow attack, even with the 2500, it does feel quite fast. So let's back off the threshold and then do a bit of gain staging. We've spoken about saturation and clipping a few times during this tutorial, but now we're gonna do it to the drums as a whole. I've chosen Satin in particular because it can do more than just saturation. So let me show you what I mean. We're gonna saturate the signal first with warm tape. But then what Saturn allows us to do is to break this up into bands. So now I have multi-band saturating control 
of each of the sections, low, mids, and highs. But what I'm gonna do is not saturate anything further, but use this dynamics band to pull down the sustain. So I can take out some of the sustain and release from the mids to make it feel clearer and more punchy. Check it out. So the best of both worlds, a bit of saturation and a bit of transient control. If I turn this the other way, it adds more sustain. Let's try that for the hats. And with just a few moves from one plugin, we can achieve the saturation, tone, and transient control that we're after. The last thing on my list is parallel distortion. Now, a lot of you are familiar with parallel compression or New York style compression on drums, but I like to use parallel distortion. Now, I'm actually using one compressor here to do the parallel distortion and then another pure distortion unit. So Devil Lock by Sound Toys, and then I've got the Fatso here by Slate Digital. So we're gonna increase the signal so they're being triggered really heavily and then use the fader on the sends themselves to control the level. Thanks for watching and don't forget that every month Boombox is giving away $500 worth of studio equipment. All you have to do is comment down below with what your favorite compressor is. It's been a pleasure as always and welcome to Boombox, the home of